welcome to my sewing room. I have some of the most beautiful garments and home decorating pieces to share with you. This particular tea cozy, which you see all over Europe, as you know, since the English especially like tea, is, has beautiful Celtic lace shaping. It also has a technique called gimp work. This wonderful, almost looks like a satin stitch line around here, is a technique called gimp work. This is such an adorable pillow. It is done on English netting. And on one side, it says good morning. And on the other side, it says good night. Very typical of the Victorian linens. And I call this linens that talk. Beautiful, beautiful dresses made by my very dear friend, Connie Palmer, who's gonna be my guest in a few minutes. This beautiful machine embroidery on the front of this pinafore bib. The beautiful design and a very interesting technique. The machine scallop has been run along the edge of the organdy and it looks like it's a Swiss trim. How beautiful. The next exquisitely beautiful dress is done out of a, of a silk taffeta and a tiny, tiny gingham. Now the most wonderful technique on this dress, the two pieces, the three pieces of lace are butted together and this looks like hand faggoting, but it isn't, it's machine faggoting. Let me share with you the front of this dress how magnificent the machine embroidery and the lace shaping. I call these football lace shapes because that's what Joanna used to call it. Actually, it's ovals. How magnificent. Christening dresses are one of the favorite types of garments that I have ever done and so many people. Let me move this beautiful skirt out. This christening dress has a beautiful white on white finish with a magnificent cross machine embroidered on the front. Then just come down the front of this christening dress and you will see one of the most magnificent pieces, one of the most beautiful skirts with the crosses and the doves holding the ribbons. My last magnificent machine made heirloom I'm going to share is this beautiful dress with the collop, a with a scallop, scalloped collar, a beautiful portrait collar. And can you see the wonderful machine embroidery there in the middle? How magnificent. And now will you come over with me to my technique boards? The first time I saw this magnificent christening dress made by Connie Palmer, I named it the Royal Christening Dress. I think you will understand why when you take a closer look. Every bit of this magnificent dress is made by machine. All of the embroidery, and by the way, I think it looks like it could be in a museum in any country in the world too. All of the embroidery was done by machine. The magnificent leaves and flowers and bows all done in ecru embroidery. And by the way, here is a pea that has been monogrammed in with uh, a sewing machine. And I know that stands for Palmer, but I'm going to claim that that also stands for pulling. Anyway, coming all the way down to the bottom, this is the little bib that comes over the dress. And what I want to share with you now is this double scalloped ruffle. The ruffle is really a straight ruffle with pretty lace at the bottom, but these wonderful scallops have been stitched on and then all gathered together. Notice that each one of them has a wonderful, very delicate ecru machine embroidery in the middle. Now, how do you make this scalloped ruffle? First of all, many of you know that French and English lace has a gathering thread which is built in. So when I pull the gathering thread, I gather my ruffle. Then I trace off the scalloped ruffle piece. Then I stitch the gathered lace down with a zigzag. And then if you want to, you can come back with a uh, wing needle pin stitch. In order to finish the ruffle, I will then come raise the ruffle and simply trim away the excess fabric from behind. To make the double ruffle, I put one layer of the scalloped ruffle with the gathered lace on top of the regular ruffle. I put another one and so forth all the way across the dress. This is another very interesting variation which is so pretty. This is a scalloped top ruffle also with the rows of ecru French lace uh, insertion butted together and zigzagged. And then this is gimp work that finishes that scallop. I think that one's very pretty also. 
Here with me today as my very special guest is my dear friend, Connie Palmer. Connie is a Husqvarna Viking educator. And Connie, it is so good to oh, have you on the show oh, again. It's so and fun your to dress be here. is magnificent. Oh, thank show you. us how to do that, Ruffle. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, um, I, when I was designing that dress, the, it, got so, it got to be such a large project that we had to have something on the bottom of it that would kind of balance it out. You know, so that's I where see. I came up. You know, I had to come up with something that was more than just a very plain ruffle. So that's how it all started. So, like you said before, the first thing that you would want to do is draw your scallops off uh, uh, onto some fabric. And then <clears throat> we want to shape the lace around the scallop piece. And you will pull a thread in the header. And I tell my students it's the very tippy toppy scallopy thread. Sort of sounds the like easiest, a song, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> tippy toppy scallopy. <laughs> so, and just <laughs> pin it on there. <laughs> and then we're going to zigzag the lace on first. I like to zigzag it on first, and I call that my basting, sort of my basting uh, stitch. So we'll just zigzag it on first. I have it all set up. And I'll just zigzag just a tiny bit first, and then we're going. Then we're going to pin stitch it on. That's where the fun part. That's comes. right. But Connie, That's you do like to zigzag it first. I do. Just I, for yeah. kind of a, just to, for a little bit of security. Right, and I kind of that way I can kind of make sure that it's straight. So I'll just. Could you go ahead and just do the pin stitch? Sure, if you could you do. Oh, okay. definitely. I noticed you did not use stabilizer. No, nope, not for the zigzag. Now for the. Um, for the pin stitch, we will use stabilizer. So okay. I've got that right here. So we're going to set this up. I'm going to snap on a open toe foot, just so we can see just a little bit better. To do our pin stitch, we'll go right to that and just lay our fabric right on the stabilizer. Slide it right underneath the foot, and we're just going to use that open toe foot a lot. I all the time. Air, do you? A all lot of people, yes. as we've traveled around the country, use it have said that they right. use it a mm -hmm. lot for the pin stitching. Because you can too. really see okay. good. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like it because you can really see real good. And it would be real nice to select that stitch. I got you. I there. got you. <laughs> <laughs> so all we have to do now is just pin stitch the header. Very, very, very simple. After you do the little zigzag. Right. And that's going to gives it the pizzazz. Makes it absolutely right. beautiful. That just now, Connie, do you right. usually use a wing needle, or do you use a what kind of needle do you use for that pin stitch? Uh, you can use a wing needle or a uh, 110 or a 100 top stitch needle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then all you would have to do is just tear the stabilizer away, and it would just it would look just like this. Absolutely mm -hmm. beautiful. And then I'm going to skip over to this one because once you have the uh, little scallops all gathered up. Then you would attach it either to your insertion or you could attach entre-dough or just really whatever uh, look that you want to have. In other words, you make it the whole ruffle straight, right. run two rows of gathering, right. that's and all pull it, it up. That's oh, all it Connie, is. Sure. that sure. is so beautiful. Show us that other little this lace. Is really, that is this is really awfully pretty. Mm -hmm. So I decided, you know, you just keep thinking of different <laughs> things to do. And uh, so I just I sewed um, insertions together. And then uh, gathered my lace, just shaped my lace, just pretended like the uh, the um, insertion was fabric. Okay. So, and then I gathered the lace around there, and then did the gimp work. Connie, basically. Isn't that beautiful? That I just said this would be gorgeous. Well, that's my next project. Well, it's just a whole. I love it. It's a whole new concept <laughs> right. That's too. That's right. That's right. Instead of using instead of using fabric to do right. your gimp work right. there. Right. And now then, Connie has a special sewing for baby project for you. You've just seen the royal christening dress. Here is the royal bonnet. This is absolutely magnificent with the scalloped pieces on the back. And let me just turn this around so you can see the embroidered brim of the front of this bonnet. Isn't that magnificent? Now I'm going to pull it back up and show you the back. Connie's showing us how to do all these wonderful scalloped pieces on the christening dress. She's also put them on the back of this wonderful bonnet. Once again, all of the embroidery is machine. Connie, this is so pretty. Show us how you did okay. it. Okay. <laughs> well, again, we had to come up with a, for any discriminating baby, we have to have a beautiful royal bonnet. Especially right? for that dress. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so I wanted to make the little scallops really the feature and also the gimp work. I want to make sure that they know that there's gimp work on the bonnet over the header thread of the 
um, gathered lace because it just gave it a real um, shiny, kind of a pretty uh, touch to the... Oh, it's magnificent. The, mm -hmm. Especially when you're not using entredeau. Mm -hmm. If you were using entredeau, it would be okay, but when we didn't have any entredeau, it just needed to be real finished off. So the first thing that you have to do is make <coughs> six of the scallops, really the same way that we made the scallops on the ruffle. And three of them are embroidered, three of them are plain, or you could leave them all plain, really, to suit yourself. And then you would need to make the circle that's in the back, and the circle is real easy. Do an embroidery, and then just trace uh, your line and do an entredeau stitch around the uh, circle, and then cut it out. Okay. So that's really... Then our next step would be to pin all of the scallops around the back of the bonnet. See? Just goes all the it way around. It just goes all the way around. You just all six of those pieces. Mm -hmm. All the way around. And uh, then it'll be gathered around the edge and we'll add it right onto the circle. To that little circle. Right. It's very simple. This is ladies, this is a simple bonnet. Yeah, this and is you know really what? Easy. I didn't believe it until I saw your right. pieces there. And right. Connie, that's what I thought too. Right. It's this very easy. is easy. Right. So what I want to show you though is how to do this gimp work right around the brim of the bonnet. That's really our focus today. So I've got a piece. Here's our, our brim, and I've done a little bit of the gimp work right here at the beginning. I just drew the bonnet brim right on a piece of fabric, did my embroidery, and then you would just do the gimp work. You see how that finishes that right off? It's, oh, it's so it's really pretty, nice. Connie. I love it yep. on the lace, too. I know. It's really nice. So I'm going to do just a tiny bit of gimp work. Now, I have a gimp a foot. Uh, it's relatively new for my machine. My gimp just... Uh, snaps into the center, but if you don't have a gimp foot, you could use really any type of a open, a foot that has a little bit of open area underneath so that the gimp can ride underneath Just there. Just kind of lay it down right. so it'll ride. Right. Watch where you go. Right. Watch where you go. <laughs> you don't have to watch where you go. I don't no, have to. You have that right. jazzy little foot. <laughs> right. It, it really holds the gimp right there, so I don't have to do anything. This is kind of a no-brainer. So... And it's just a satin stitch, just a real um, satin stitch, you know, real close together. And you just run this right along the header. That you've so, already so zigzagged simple. down. Right, that you've already zigzagged. This one you would want to zigzag down because uh, it, you really wouldn't be able to see where you were going. It would be a little bit easier. But see, I don't even have to hold that gimp. Well, not with this foot, you no, know. No, no. But it could be done without oh, that foot. You certainly. don't have to have a We always foot. did it before, right? We did it before we had a <laughs> That's right. foot, didn't That's we? That's exactly right. That but I want you to see beautiful. how pretty this looks now, the difference. And, of course, I did use stabilizer underneath here, too. And you we'll, know, Connie, it's just the ultimate of cording, isn't it? It really is cording something because you put your gimp work oh, under there. I just I see the Truly difference in the two. Truly is yeah. a magnificent scene. Makes all the difference mm -mm -mm. in the world. Connie, I really love right, that. Right. Thank you so much. You're sure welcome. Thanks for having me. <laughs> and now I have a craft for you. We have called this craft a hanger safe. It's made out of a wonderful, wonderful lavender silk dupioni with a pretty little ribbon at the top, a wonderful machine monogram, and another piece of magnificent ribbon across here. Now I have a secret. I'm going to lift this up. The reason we call it a safe, I'm going to lift this up and I have a zipper built in here. If I'm in a hotel room and I don't want anyone to know that I have some valuables in here, I can hang my clothes over this beautiful hanger cover. It just looks like a hanger cover. It's very easy to make and such a nice gift to give. Here's all you do to make this. First of all, cut out your pieces, then insert a zipper. Now to make this little flap that hangs over. You have to fold a flap and then put pretty ribbon on top of that flap. Of course, I've already had my zipper in. To finish the hanger keeper, the hanger safe, we just fold it up, stitch all the way around, almost to the top on both sides, turn it right side out, insert the hanger. Then, after we get it all turned right side out, we will come back and put this pretty little bow and I'll tell you this is a wonderful thing to have or to give as a gift and I really do think it adds some element of safety to something you would like to tuck away and not have anybody look in your clothes underneath your closet to try to find something. Now I want to tell you about our next section 
There are literally thousands of notions being developed in this industry that are so much fun to use and really do make exciting news. And a lot of times they're shown at trade shows. That's one of the best places to actually see what's new. And I think my customers are always saying, well, Martha, what's new? Therefore, with our next section, Clever Notions, we're going to bring you some of the what's new in our wonderful sewing industry. Today we have a range of designs that we're going to show you and we like to create designs that work specifically with the home machines and they play up your ability to be creative. We've done some things like on this clown where we have added textured hair and it's simply a long satin stitch that you trim the bobbin thread and then the hair becomes free. The tie is also three-dimensional. It's added as a separate design. We've done some blends on his face that really bring him to life. We've also done some creative things like on this vest, we have some 3D daisies and an applique flower pot. On the front, I'm going to flip this over real fast. We have some cut work down here at the bottom. And cut work is one of Martha's favorite things to do. On this black vest, we have some 3D poinsettias. We've couched down some decorative cording and added some 3D leaves and built up some poinsettias from different petals. Here's another heirloom looking design. This is sewn on organza and the cut work is all done with the soldering iron. Makes very fast work for, for uh, cut work. This is a super, super special pillow. One I think almost anybody would love to receive. This is the antique photo pillow. I absolutely love this photo transfer on fabric. This is a little girl in her wonderful dress. It almost looks as if it's organdy, and I especially love that huge bow in her hair. Now let me tell you what I really love about the way this pillow is made. It has a, a set of uh, uh, four pieces of fabric that go around the picture to frame it. It looks like you have a mat and then a frame. Cute little charms up here too with a pretty little ribbon finishes it off. First of all, get your antique picture and you can have your photocopy place do it in sepia as we've done here and then transfer it onto fabric. This one is done in a black and white which is almost has some gray tones, some greenish gray tones which has been transferred onto linen. You can get all kinds of different looks for your favorite antique photo. Now that wonderful little mat which went around the picture first. This picture has been transferred onto a silver lame fabric. The folded fabric, straight pieces of fabric have been folded and moved in to almost make a mat. Stitch it down one side, down the other side, across the bottom. Then we're going to come in, bring the pieces of, of printed fabric, stitch across the top and flip it up however close you want to make it. Stitch across the bottom, flip it down, and we're now beginning to see a pillow develop. Then I have my side panels. I come in, stitch all the way down one side. Let's see, fold it open, and do the same thing on the other side. And Let me get the pretty little pillow back so you can look at it once again. After you have stitched all the pieces, then just put your backing on, come in here with your little charms and your ribbon, and I cannot think of a sweeter gift. As a matter of fact, if you're thinking about a Mother's Day or a, an anniversary or uh, any kind of a, a birthday, any kind of a special occasion, Christmas, just for no real reason, just you want to give a happy present to somebody. I cannot think of a sweeter present. As a matter of fact, as I look at this picture, I have a picture of my mother when she was a little girl. Just And this, by the way, is not a wonderful photograph. It's just a picture of a little girl standing beside a house, and that's really the only kind I have of my mama. But I can assure you, I'm going to make one of these. I can think of the very picture. My mama was kind of standing with her hand uh, close to her face like this, just kind of looking, and I promise you that's one of the first things I'm going to do when I'm able to get to the photo transfer place. I'm going to make one of these with my mama's picture in it, just standing by her little house when she was a little girl. And next, I would like you to come to my attic with me. Organdy has always been one of my very favorite fabrics for beautiful heirloom clothing. This little dress is fascinating to me. 
I bought the dress, which believe it or not, still had its original slip underneath it, at an antique uh, costume uh, clothing show in Massachusetts that I go to at least once a year. The dress, why it is so fascinating, you are, you're asking to me, well, it is just one piece of organdy. It's sort of an A-line front and an A-line back. Now, I will tell you that here the tucks have been stitched in, but there are no seams really except the side seams and this looks as if it's a little armhole that's been cut out well it isn't it's just lace that has been stitched right on the organ to gather lace now you do see those pretty little embroidered motifs in the middle and by the way the tucks are stitched in by hand now coming down on the skirt of this little dress I think it's fascinating the antique lace the gathered lace has been stitched down and then if you will look right here, it looks like something peculiar is there. It isn't pulled together in the middle. Well, when I turn it around to the back, you're going to see why it wasn't pulled together in the middle. Originally, I believe, all of those little places had a little bow tied. Isn't that sweet? And the back is exactly like the front, except the tucks at the top do not have any embroidery, and I'm real sure that there was a perky little ribbon that was tied at the top of every one of these little uh, pieces of lace that come up and then they don't join. So that had to be made for a ribbon. Isn't that cute? For our Sewing from the Heart segment today, I have a really sweet letter that came to me via email. So I don't have this nice lady's name, but I'm sure she wouldn't, wouldn't mind my sharing her letter. I would love to share with you what those wonderful ladies are doing at Manchester Sewing Center in Manchester, Connecticut. Pam and Pamela are certified Martha Pullen instructors and share their joyfulness in instructing many interesting and challenging classes. Last month, they once again had classes for us in making baby lap quilts for the children at Connecticut Medical Center in Hartford, Connecticut. What was also neat were the preemie shirts we had the opportunity to make. The shirts were so very tiny that it is really a miracle that any of these infants survived to wear them home. In addition to the lap quilt, I was able to make 10 of the preemie shirts out of soft jerseys using beautiful ribbons and laces and techniques I incorporated that I learned from your heirloom classes a few years ago when you were teaching here in Manchester. God is truly good. I thank him that I am able to share my love of sewing with such caring people. In fact, five people from our church and I are finishing up a six by nine banner for our sanctuary to be hung for Easter morning. Many blessings to you and your Joe as he enters your business full time. It is a wonderful opportunity to be together during the day. My husband is now retired, although he teaches at a high school on a substitute basis, and I'm hoping to retire by January 1st, so I'll have more time to sew and time to share our days together. I will keep you both in my prayers as hubby makes this exciting move. I would like to share with you that we do have the joy now. My husband, Joe, is retiring from dentistry and coming in my business full time, so that's what this dear lady is referring to, and it is an exciting time to be able to share what you love. And I think most of you know that I love the sewing business so much. Every time I do a television show for you or we write a book or I see one of these beautiful garments, it's just that same thrill all over again that started when I was a little girl, just five years old. And I fell in love with sewing when I was five years old and it isn't any different today than it was many years ago when I made Christmas stockings with my Aunt Chris and when my mother helped me to sew. I, I believe the first thing we made, other than doll clothes, was a little blue and white striped skirt and maybe a little halter top of some kind with maybe a little ruffle around it. I think that's the first thing that Mama helped me sew that I actually wore. Thank you so much for joining me in my sewing room today. I have had such a good time. And the reason we do it is to bring the joy to you so you can have a good time too. Enjoy your sewing. If you have a chance, please teach a child how to sew. And I would also ask you to please find someone less fortunate that would just love to have something beautiful that you know how to make. <music>